Hello and welcome to the Maths Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 575. Releasing oh. November 30 in Australian cinemas is Chris Mess, a dramatic comedy that tells the story of Chris Flint, a once famous actor, fresh out of rehab, who moves into a halfway house with his firm but fair sponsor and a vegan musician also in recovery. When Chris accidentally bumps into his estranged daughter, he relies on the help of his new housemates to win her forgiveness. Starring Steve La McQuand, Darren Gilshannon, and Hannah Joy, Christmas succeeds as a bittersweet Aussie Christmas movie that portrays the ups and downs of the merry season that for some presents a time of loss, stress, and anxiety. And joining me now is the director and writer of Christmas, Mr. Heath Davis. Heath, how are you today? Hello, Matthew. Good to see you again, my friend. Great to be here. It's really good to see you too, and it's really awesome to be watching another Heath Davis film. You know, I'm a big fan of Book Week, and I love Broke and, and Locust that came out a couple of years ago. Even though you didn't write that, you did direct that one. Um, and now we got Chris Mess, which I think is like in the same kind of vein of, of Book Week and kind of like this kind of dramatic comedy kind of film. But what's really interesting about this movie, as the title suggests, it is a Christmas movie. For you, do I've, I've heard for you, do I've heard you say, um, in multiple interviews that you wanted to make like a real Christmas movie. Um, what does that in, in just explain that to me for a, a bit? What does that in, in, entail on, well, on your part? Just, What's missing from yeah. the other Christmas movies that that you wanted to bring with your film? Oh man, it's it's really emotional truth. To be honest, it's just like Christmas can be very tough for a lot of people. It can be lonely. It can be. Uh, uh, it can be um, anxiety-inducing. Um, you know, uh, uh, mental health rates can be exacerbated in that period of time because we're sold this dream and illusion that this idea, happy family, happy life, and life should be, everything should be wonderful at Christmas. And we we all buy into that. And somewhere along the way, we lost the real meaning of what sort of Christmas is about. And none of our lives are like that. Most people are from broken families. Most people spend Christmas, you know, alone or with people that they don't, they feel alone around. And I am one of those people. So I was like, you know what? I want to actually sort of depict the truth here and also just, you know, shine a light on just the alcoholism that sort of underpins it, especially in Australia and, and as well but in australia it's hot and you know all my life in my adult life i've you know i've had friends and and family members and whatnot all say oh hey, christmas is coming and they drink that you know to get through it so um and that that's you know it's 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 part of our you know psyche you know australia and australians we, we talk about these barbecues and whatever but we never see it in our films and or even in the, the last couple of years, in the COVID years, you know, while I was sort of playing with the whole idea of making a Christmas movie, there were articles coming out, even in publications that I've never read this before, uh, in tabloid publications, you know, talking about mental health and Christmas and how to get through with it and alcohol and what how, you know, how to monitor your drinking at Christmas parties and all of these sort of things. And I thought, like, wow, maybe we're actually a society we're ready to sort of, you know, uh, you know, acknowledge this. And and I just thought, yeah, if I could tell it honestly, then uh, without being doom and gloom, you know, there's humour in this film. It's entertaining because, yes. you know, it, because it's such a chaotic period of time that it is funny. You kind of can only laugh. But I didn't want to, you know, just con contrive. Just this is the world. These are the people. These people are like you and I, um, even though some are actors. And even the actor in this movie is not the big, some hotshot Hollywood slip guy drives. Most the actors I know, you know, you get actors that do not drive Porsches. Some drive Ubers when they're not working. And so all of that I wanted to depict as well, even with the musician. And it was COVID when we made this film. And my musician friends weren't touring and the real musicians playing is sort of their lifeblood that's how they sort of get through and that was taken away from them so their sort of anxieties were exacerbated so there was a lot of all of that that was sort of melting around and i was like you know i had another movie that was a bigger budget with a british jack big british actor keen to do it and over torpedo that like it did most things and then i was like if i'm going to make something 
Um, it's got to be just really worth, worth it because it was going to be hard and we didn't have bars. Um, and it's sort of you know, the heart of the movie, sort of, I think that's what's getting different people to connecting to the truth. You know. Please support Matt's movie reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. Um, Steve Limbaquand, who plays Chris in the movie, you've worked with him before on Broken. He said that what Christmas represents for him is like, this is your trilogy of films dealing with broken men. And I I have to add on onto that. It's not only broken men, but these men who deal with the downsides of fame in a sort of way. Um, the first movie, Broken, you had a sports star who has, has a gambling addiction. In um, Book Week, you have this author who had a hit, um, best-selling book and then they just went to his career, went to nowhere. And now you have this actor here in your movie, Christmas, and he has a al- alcohol addiction and all the anxieties and stuff that comes with that. What is it about the creative professions or, or professions where there's a fame attached to it that uh, yeah, it's interesting, really put it to your it's, movies? Yeah, well, it's, it's not a conscious thing, but, you know, you, when when you start to think about it, you go, wow, there are these parallels, the characters are different. I mean, it's it's probably being the artist in Australia, in Australia and the realities of that. It's almost mm-hmm. like, okay, and it's to me, it's still just, it's sort of absurd how hard it is to be here. And on the surface, it's, it's a superficiality. It's a little bit like Christmas in, in this instance, where is, hey, you know, we've got Santa, we've got these ads, and we've got all this wonderful plots, and everything's amazing. And, you know, if you look in the ads, we're all sold this dream ideal, but the reality is completely different. Like, it's, it's an act, it's a, it's a tough gig, it's a grind, it's hard. And, um, and so, you know, the whole that that tr- that lie is sort of something that sort of it doesn't sit well with me. And so, mm. somehow, in some way, sort of always underpinned a lot of it. Maybe it's because I write a lot about what you know, and, and you know, and I've seen just you know the struggles that comes with that. Um, and you know, I guess again at Christmas time, and I'm playing on that whole ideal of Santa and the make believe and the lie and the truth, and so that's you know, that's another motivation, um, and I guess psychology behind this one. But yeah, there is a it was a trilogy. Even when I first made Broke with Steve, I was like, you know, I've got these ideas for these guys that happen to do that, and um, and lo and behold, is actually. I always say oh, I'll probably never make another film and you just don't know because it's so hard and it gets even harder and what it was, especially the ones that I want to tell. Um, but I, I started, I had this idea for a music movie and it was hanging out with Hannah and shooting Christmas that I sort of figured out the thread for that. Um, so that's sort of about this sort of pseudo, again, he's kind of almost famous musician character but there's a lounge lizard on the Gold Coast. So, uh, I don't have a, a real answer as to why that thread is there, but there's a big part of me in all of these characters and the people that I sort of mix with. So uh, somehow, um, you know, it's that juxtaposition that's also dramatic and interesting. There's um a lot of symbolism in the film that I caught on to, and maybe it's just something that's in my brain, so I just want to ask you a few questions about that. The first thing has to do with the Christmas tree that's in this movie. Yeah. Um, I think someone refers to it as dying but not dead. I mean, that's a very trans that's a very transparent kind of um thing, right? I mean, the Christmas tree as you know, not the best looking thing of the bunch, it still has a purpose, it still has a a uh, a redemption arc to it, doesn't it? It kind of represents the characters in a sort of way, doesn't it? Well, they sort of regenerate. Like I grew up in the bushfires, uh, the Blue Mountains. I was living out there with a really large, as bad bushfires. I'm going out there this afternoon with the screening again. But trees, when they burn down, they actually pollinate, self-pollinate, and they regenerate and they grow. There's a rebirth. There's almost like a biblical fashion to the tree. So the Christmas tree was a little bit like that. It's a metaphor for these characters. They're living in a halfway house. The tree in the actual movie was like thrown out the back of the shop and Aaron's character saw some life in that, right? He's going to try and sort of bring it back to life or keep it alive for that period of time. And that's kind of what the characters are going. Um, um, you know, a, a 
was really looking for all of those symbols because it's you, it is very symbolic. This movie, there's a lot of visual metaphor, um, symbolism, and motifs. And so I, you know, most people look at a Christmas tree and they don't actually really think about, you know, mm. yeah. But then I said, oh, it's just this pretty thing with some presents under the top. And, you know, but we have the real Christmas tree. When you think about a real Christmas tree, there's nothing sadder. I always, post Christmas, I always, you know, there's this little bit of, even when I finish a party or when I finish the movie, when I finish a movie, I get quite down. I, I, I get the blues. And it's always a little bit like Boxing Day. And have you ever seen a real like the excitement of a, a real tree that's green and on sale at the tree store, and then you see it a week or two after Christmas, brown and dead and discarded by the side of the uh-huh. road. It's kind of mm. like that's really tragic to me. It's like wow, that's like that's the reality of Christmas. There, people have just moved on. They don't give a shit. That's kind of like being the artist. That's, in some weird way, that's filmmaking now because films take forever to make them, and now they're just consumed and people have forgotten about them and we don't even talk about the film that won the Oscar last year. Yeah, I when don't, I was a yeah, kid, well, yeah, uh, yeah. even the great the fads that we just churn and consume and we move on and but there's always collateral that is. Uh, that's the character. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by T Public. T Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, T Public is sure to have something you love. Another one that I picked up on, and I might be just this might be just a silly thing that I I, I thought of. Um, the character of Chris, he hurts his right foot repeatedly in a movie, and I, that I, that was kind of curious to me because I looked I looked up if there was any type of spiritual meaning in regards to right foot, and I saw that some religions, some cultures consider the right foot to be lucky. And here's this bloke, like he's on his side. He keeps banging that right foot the over right and foot over. In the door. That's right. Yeah. That's what, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's what the foot's in there. I mean, I, I didn't even explain this to the actors, but as a writer, you've always got to have these motivations. And, you know, there's always the obstacle, the hurdle, the obvious of getting out there. And, he's, and his character, what does he do? He's just so selfish. He had no respect for this house he's just going to jump the back fence and invade it right he's just he's always used to having everything but yeah you look at you know even in the alcoholic the recovery the redemption story you have the 12 steps so his foot was broke you know he's got these walking with a lip now trying to go on for each step and the next step and he goes to the do- his daughter's house and foot sort of you know the footprint she slams the door on the feet so there's these subtle metaphors of the journey that he's trying to sort of take, you know, internally as well. And another one that I saw as well is that, and I think it comes down back to the the um the core of the film in that okay, well the, well, the, the scene in the movie is so Chris is trying to cook this chicken. His mm-hmm. oven's busted and he's got no alternative except to go from house to house on his street and ask for per- people can use his oven. Now the Christmas story of 2,000 years ago, Mary and Joseph went all the way on a donkey from one place to another, mm-hmm. and they had to find a place. They had to go from one house to another mm-hmm. house to another house. Am I drawing a line here, or is this something I'm just... No, no, no. That was all about... I mean, because that was the whole idea of, like, Christmas is love your neighbour and the help. That was all part yeah. of the whole lot of that research. That's why the Christmas lights and the carols and we all and those old school and Hannah sings Oh Holy Night, those hymns. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to really go back to those core, like almost primal messages, which were the themes of what Christmas was supposed to be about. And sort of, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't say it's a homage or a pastiche or anything, but just sort of a contemporary version of those, those sort of like, see if they still sort of translate. Um, so it was really insightful. On that. That's, that was all, also, I did have a Christmas when I was traveling, and we did have the same kind of thing. And we were strangers in the town, and we did go to try to get help from like the neighbors living at the time. Nobody helped us. And that was always in the back of my mind. I was like, we're actually foreigners from the other side of the world. We just need a bit of help, bit of help and a bit of time. And like, nobody wanted that. I wanted the always a scene in the movie in some way I didn't know how it's going 
The Maths Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by Fandango. Get the latest showtimes, guarantee tickets, browse Rotten Tomato scores, and watch trailers with Fandango, the number one movie ticketing app. I want to talk about um, Hannah Joy in the movie. Now, from I don't know, uh, like I'm 40 something years old. I'm still listening to the music that I listened to when I was 20 something, right? Yes. So, I don't know. I didn't know who Hannah was or Middle Kids or what have mm-hmm. you. Um, after I watched the movie, I did a really deep dive and I've been listening to a lot of their music and I quite like it quite a bit. Um, she is fantastic in films. The first time she's been on screen as, a, as an actor. Ever. Um, she's flagged, she's flanked by these two really uh, veteran Australian actors, two great actors in, in Darren and in Steve. And, you know, with, with due respect to both of them, I think she stole the show. I really do, because not only is her performance great, but her musicianship and the original compositions that she brings to the, the table as well, mm-hmm. I think it's just, it's quite a remarkable performance because here she is bringing her talent that she's known for into a role um, but she's also li- reaching the level of like her co-stars as well with her performance. Um, I think it's just mm, I'm very much with you there, and I'm glad you say that, mate, because it uh, just from a filmmaking perspective, it's the biggest creative risk I've ever taken. But it actually also, and I've been around long enough now, I've been doing it long enough to actually come to uh, peace with the fact that. I should follow the instincts because that was my initial instinct. Some people were like, what? Are you crazy? And I'm like, I didn't even know Hannah. Like, we were Facebook friends and she'd seen some mm-hmm. films. I, I didn't know if she ever wanted to do or I just knew she was a performer. I knew the songs. Was, she writes these sophisticated pop songs. I knew they had a following. And I just, if you listen to the Middle Kids lyric, uh, songs and lyrics, writes a lot about um, they're these happy pop songs on the surface, but, but you know, they juxtapose because the quite dark lyric. She writes a lot about her relationship with alcohol and she's got some amount of demons. And I was like, well, she reads this and picked up on the subtext. I think she might be into it. And so I reached out to her. I said, Hannah, and I wrote it for her. She's in my head for these characters. And, and I was like, Hannah, I've written you a, a script. He was like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. I don't know, hardly know you when I don't act. That's what we ever thought about it. He goes, well, send it over. And it was COVID. So COVID also felt like anything was possible. Mm. And so the band wasn't touring and they couldn't play. And she read the, and she's really connected to it. Said, I really, really like this. And chat. So we had a COVID chat, you know, in the masks in a park. And I said to her, if you want to do this, it's going to take a lot of commitment. It's going to be very hard. And we've got to do a lot of work, but I'm willing to do it. When you meet me there, she goes, oh, totally. So we had a lot of time spent together with conversations, not like learning how to act or reading. It was just subtext, intonation, backstory, all of this stuff that you do with, you know, the seasoned actors. She didn't. She's not trained with technique, so she doesn't, you know, but she's a performer and a storyteller and a human being, so she could capture that. And so what I really tried to do was get her to bring in the stuff that from her personal life that can roll into this character and then flesh it out and make it three-dimensional. And then on our own bat, we got to a stage where I was like, well, maybe we should just get a camera out and just get you comfortable. I know you've done some videos, but you got actors, you're in a scene. It's like this is you know, daunting, and she enrolled in this short acting course at night, acting with the camera. She went off on her own bat a few nights a week for a few months. And, like, most of the other students there were middle kids fans, so she'd turn it up with fans, right? And like, whoa. And she was just 100% committed. And on day one, you never know what you're going to get. Um, and because you just don't know. She's going to freeze, there's people, whatever, and then it's – We've done all the home, but done all the work, so I was quietly confident. And she just got very sad. And I was like, she owns this. She's cool. And the, the dynamic just works so brilliantly. So I hope everybody sees it. Um, and, you know, things, I don't know if she wants to keep pursuing an acting career, but I've written something else around her. But, yeah, the songs are great. And she just, yeah, really owned it. And it's just one of those things where you take a big risk in, you swing your eye and it works out. That's... 
The Maths Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by Gift Card Store. Australia's leading provider of gift cards, Gift Card Store offers a variety of prepaid MasterCard and Visa cards in physical or e-card format. You can even design your own card as the ultimate personalized gift. With Gift Card Store, you can gift the gift you know they will love. Is there any possibility of soundtrack or Spotify playlist of the music that's well, featured in the movie? We are hoping. I mean, like, it's been a tricky thing because the band haven't fully got behind it. It's just there's a, the separation between her and the band. And they've got an album coming out in February, so they sort of, you know, didn't want to cannibalise each other in some capacity. There is a possibility. They haven't actually. She hasn't seen it on a big screen yet. So on Thursday night, we sold three sessions at Denny Newtown. So I think when they see it on a big screen, that might change. Um, But what was cool is a month later, they went off to the UK um, once the whole COVID sort of was a gap and travelling was allowed again. They recorded the latest record with a significant uh, British producer. And... um, after that record, my, my, a lot of the songs on the new album, she was writing at night at the end of the film. Go back to the hotel and just write these songs. So uh, really like, inspired by the whole process. One of those is a Christmas song that's out now. Not in the movie, though. But, so. Yeah, I saw that. It was like um, they released it on their channel uh, a couple yeah, of weeks ago, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, that was really cool. I was like, wow. But, you know, um, and in the script, she writes those original songs based on the titles that I had. So I was like, man, this is close to a rock star as I'm ever going to become, you know, because uh, I love music and I, I love, to me, cinema is just when music and the sound and images come together with the right emotion and performance. So there's a lot, She the music, and she brings a lot to this movie. Um, and like any other Aussie movie, it's really tricky um, to, to get recognised names that mean anything sort of internationally and, um, so, you know, I had to sort of think outside the square a little bit. I was like, okay, I'll take a risk on it. People know who she is. Not everybody, but she's got the indie cred. Um, uh, but, yeah, it was, it, it's it's all kind of worked out really great. So I'm, I'm looking forward to watching her watch it with an audience. Well, I guarantee she's going to be blown away by the performance because whenever she appears on screen and whenever especially she does – her, her music, but but even the parts in between, which is on the screen, she's just fantastic in the film. And it's one of the many reasons why I love Christmas. And for everyone listening right now, November 30, Strange Cinemas, Christmas, I urge everyone to watch this in cinemas when it comes out. We need to get yes. butts in seats. We and need indie Australian uh, and movies. And this movie plays so well, man, with an audience. They laugh, they, they yes. cry, they are. Yes. It's just. It's a film about human connection at Christmas time, so it plays better when you're watching it with other people. And I think that for really, really does. So. And um, when Hannah plays Oh Holy Night in this movie, I oh. I urge everyone to just look at one another and see if you don't have goosebumps on your arms when that happens because it's a I fantastic was, moment. We were all getting goosebumps on the day, and just for pure selfish reasons, we're doing well for time. And I was like, Hannah, can we do a couple? Because <laughs> I just knew what it was doing for everybody on the day, the, all the other actors creating this tone. And I was like, keep that going. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, or any, for, you, and I agree with you, mate. It's like, if you want to see this movie for one reason, go watch Hannah sing that song on a big screen in the theatre. It's amazing. It is. And um, i got to say, I'm going to say now I'm preparing my end of year list and this is in the top top end of my favourite Aussie films of the oh, year. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate and, um, that. And I recommend everyone watch this film. So watch it November 30th. It's this week. Watch it. Um, and, um, yeah, go to your cinema. If they don't have it, tell them to put it on. Um, and and, get up and, and that's it. happening. So We've had a few people actually hit up their cinema and they're giving it a go. So, you yeah, never know. So, um, you know, and at the end, it'll be on a streamer just before Christmas. So, um, you know, most people will see it there, but it's different experience. Uh, Heath Davis, I thank you so very much for your time. Congrats on the movie. It's great to see one of your films out there again. I can't wait to see the other one. I'm so chomping at the bit already for the next one to come out. I'm thank such you, a big Matthew. fan of your work. Appreciate it, man. Can't do it without you. And keep, but 
everyone just keep watching indie movies and keep going to the theaters because it's so important that uh, you know we that could be another part of the cultural fabric that can go. The cinemas are down forty percent, not even just for indie movies, you know. So we just really need people to start going back. To this. It's so important. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content.